Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, and that is Drew Galloway, and we are here for your weekly K-State football recruiting update. And this is a pretty big one. This might be one of the more significant ones that we've done in a long time because not only is it going over some guys at K-State, not only are they after, but it's like they are in the, the thick of it and trying to land these guys have gotten serious bumps in the latest on three rankings update. So that's significant news. A lot of four stars to get into talking about. And then in addition to that, we also have official visits that are beginning to get set. I think those kick off in May. And then obviously the bulk of them are going to come in June. And uh, a lot of notable guys there and uh, some some dudes that we'll bring up and Drew will kind of give us the lowdown on. But Let's just start by digging into some of the guys that got serious bumps in the latest rankings update. And one of them is a guy that K-State's been on for a pretty long time now. They seem to be uh, one of the front runners for, and that's Lucas Allgaier, an offensive lineman from St. Louis who, I mean, you see the, the on three RPM there, it's heavily favored to K-State. Now that's in part due to the fact that back, I think in March, even D.Y. put in uh, prediction for all guy to go to K State. And I mean, the, the bump is significant here. He's an industry ranked four star, but in, in on threes rankings, he's inside the top 300. He's the second best player in the state of Missouri. What's the latest on Lucas Allgaier? And was this bump expected for him? Uh, I think that it was sort of expected. I mean, it, we were in a portion where. I think that you're only going to see Lucas Allgaier's rating go up uh, because this was the first rating that he's gotten from on three. So the fact that he's immediately a four star is a good thing uh, for him. And I, I just, I feel like K-State's in a really good spot. He posted that he is taking an official visit um, June. I believe it's uh, June uh, 7th. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he will be back in Manhattan. He was back in Manhattan for a spring visit. I think K-State's been in a pretty comfortable spot and kind of just in a wait and see on him committing whenever. Uh, but him committing after the official visit honestly wouldn't surprise me at all. I, I just think that K-State's done a really good job and he's really prioritized going to Manhattan. And, and there's a reason that DY has placed a prediction for him. And I think that I would be right there with them as well. So good news on all guy a St. Louis guy. And we already know that K-State's current loan commit of the class is a St. Louis guy and Dylan Duff, their quarterback. Uh, this, this seems to be one that K-State's in a good spot for. And, and like you said, this is the first rating he got from on three. It's inside the top 300. That means like the what contributes to the industry rating, which has him only 389th. Uh, that still has 24-7, which only has him as a three-star right now. That's probably likely to go up. I mean, most of these services are in, in step with each other, and uh, you'd expect them to get on that. But that's that's high praise and good news for K-State. And this is a trend that we've seen now, last recruiting cycle and this one coming up, where K-State has been able to find these offensive linemen that they look at them and they say, okay, this, this guy's for real, not taking into consideration what – the outside thinks initially, and then we've seen them steadily grow in the rank rankings as it continues on. We saw, obviously, with Gus Hawkins last year, who shot up the rankings, and that was the first commit of K-State's 2024 class. And then, to you know, some extent, Caden Massey out of Linden got the same bump as well. I, I don't think he finished as a four-star in the industry ranking, but he did get the four-star tag from 24-7 and was just on, on the fringe of it. So, this is one of those deals where I think Connor Riley, people like him, but they've also given him some guff for how things have worked out with offensive linemen. You look and go, offensive line's been pretty solid since he's been here. He obviously helped develop Cooper Beebe into what he was and so many other guys uh, like KT Leviston you think of. The talent evaluation that this staff is doing at offensive linemen and the fact that they're also able to, to seemingly close on these guys, that's pretty significant. Oh, yeah, it, it's big time. And they have more offensive linemen this cycle that I think that they're really close on, too. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get to a few more of those when we talk about the official visits that are scheduled in a little bit. Moving on now, this is a, a guy that isn't quite to four star status, but another offensive lineman that K-State really likes has, has been on uh, pretty quick here. Uh, another Missouri native, Will Kimna from Jefferson City 
Uh, what's the book on Will Kimna? Uh, so Will Kimna is the guy that K State offered dur- during the fall, and then you kind of heard that Nebraska was starting to lead for him, but now it, it's K State, and I wouldn't be surprised if he commits soon ish. But I think that KSH is just in a really good spot. His official visit will also be June 7th. And I believe KSH ended up bumping it. It was either Duke or Cincinnati uh, was supposed to schedule or was supposed to have him on campus that weekend. And it said he's going to K-State. And uh, I think that that's another one where if he doesn't commit before the official visit, I think that he could commit on the official visit uh, because K-State's really, really pulled ahead. And he went up, I believe he was an 88 before. Now he's an 89 and they're on three ranking. And he is on the cusp of four-star status in the industry ranking. Right now, his his rating is very similar to where Caden Massey was at this time last year. Yeah, you go and look. Uh, he's he's He is right there. I mean, he's he's an 89 in the on three rankings. And uh, in terms of offensive linemen, he's the 35th ranked offensive tackle. And so that gives him the 475 nationally, which you probably would have to go back and look to see last year how it ended up working out uh, on where the cutoff ended up being for four star status. I can do it real quick if, uh, you know, I hit load more about a thousand times and, and go through this. But you're right. He is right there on the cusp. And something else we're, we'll get into in a little bit uh, is just how many of these guys K State is right in the thick of for that are significant dudes and not just, you know, I think people, they see three stars or whatever, and they go, okay, whatever. Like that's kind of K-State's bread and butter. Not all three stars are created equal. And we see that with the position that K-State's in for some of these guys. So last year, the cutoff for four-star status in the industry ranking, and now all this varies just because of uh, the way things end up working out, but it was, it was 400. Um, So, that's kind of where you're at and you think of right now where that's the update and other services have to go. It can wait pretty heavily. This seems like one of those that's a pretty good mover. And I would tell people that probably over the last two or three years, Drew has been very good at kind of following the trends and being able to almost like uh, he's playing the stock market here. Tell you, is this guy going to go up? Is he going to go down? with his ranking and K-State has been able to find the movers up, which is a significant thing. Uh, we'll, if, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if they're like an 88, 89 now, they, there's a real chance that they can get up to four star industry by the end of the, by the end of the cycle. All right, let's flip sides of the line though, but stay in the trenches because we have Cade Pieterzak, uh, which I mean, look, this is another close one here. This is a four star, the best player in the state of North Dakota. And a, a guy inside the top 200 of the on three national rankings, you see the RPM there. It's it's a tight race right now. It says between Nebraska and K State. What's your understanding of where this recruiting battle sits for the Wildcats? Uh, so a lot of uh, Cade Pieterzak's recruitment has kind of been in the dark a little bit, but he's. I would probably agree that K State Nebraska top two, and I I would even probably have it in a percentage that's tighter than that, because I think it kind of depends on the day who is leading for him. Uh, But K-State staff obviously has a lot of ties to North Dakota and that area of the country. Uh, He was on campus at Nebraska and K-State for spring ball. I I believe that an official visit is in the works for K-State and Nebraska. And then you just kind of see from there because he, he's a guy that isn't the most talkative. So He's more of an actions guy, and the actions really start to lead you to believe that it's K-State, Nebraska, and then everybody else. Well, and this is one of those, two where if you go in and look, you said K-State, hey, they've been good, North Dakota, obviously the ties to North Dakota State, but we did see him last year get a guy, Navarro Shunky, from up there that was a, a pretty good get, say last year. Essentially, it's this year, but we're talking recruiting, so it was last year. Uh is this one – where do you see the timeline of this recruitment playing out? Because if we know it's Nebraska and K-State tight, when might we get a definitive answer? Is this like one that wraps up in the summer after official visits, or does it drag out? I wouldn't be surprised if it's more of a summer decision. I, I just think that we're in a you know, world right now where not just the schools, but I think the kids want to be done and committed by 
the end of the summer. So I think not, a, not according to the people that think that a, a summer signing period would ruin high school football. They, uh, you know, that would be terrible for the kids. Not like that's just a selfish, the adults involved situation, but that's for another time. That, nothing- say that, that that's another time. Cause yeah. I, I think that, I think that that's more healthy for all parties would be a yeah. spring or a summer signing period. But I think that kids just want to be done before their before their senior season starts so they can really focus on their senior season and not really have the stress of waiting to commit to a school. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a summer decision. Yeah. All right. Well, those are some names to follow along with here for K-State that uh, got notable bumps and rankings in the latest on 300 that came out. Now let's shift our gears and we, we start to see more and more of these official visits scheduled. You just said that Pietra, uh, Pierre Zach is going to probably get one lined up pretty soon for K-State. Here are some of the notable official visits already on the calendar for K-State. Uh, May 10th through the 12th, that you had the, the Anthony Ogamoro one. Is that still a go? Is that still happening? Yeah, I believe that that's still happening. I'm, I'm really interested to see uh, where that recruitment goes because he was just at Oklahoma State over the weekend. Mm-hmm. And he's one that he got a, the bump into four star status. I, I don't think he yes. was a four star when we talked about him a couple of weeks ago. So that's another offensive lineman uh, that K State is in on that's gotten this bump. And you also note that he's from Oklahoma, which we've talked about a lot in the recruiting that because of Matt Wells, K State's ties and opportunities in Oklahoma are starting to go up. Yeah, he he's somebody that has really kind of blown up over the last few months and even weeks where he went from having not a ton of offers to now he's getting a ton of interest so i'm really interested to see uh what his timeline is because it seems like he's another one where he wants to be committed by the end of the summer as well all right moving on then this this all comes almost a full month later but june 7th through the 9th is a really big weekend for k-state you see that hey dylan duff the committed quarterback is going to be in town lucas all guy or another st louis guy he'll be there as well uh and then some other notables and leo amanza is a guy that fits into that category of what i talked about where not all three stars are created equal and that's the fact that you see the three teams in the mix according to the on three rpm is texas tech k-state and utah that's a pretty good trio to be involved with uh, for the uh, the senior to be out of uh, Byron Nelson High School in Texas. Yeah, it's no coincidence that all of the official visitors so far for that June 7th through the 9th weekend are Missouri guys or Missouri guys or guys that have Missouri ties because uh, Leo Almanza, former St. Louis native, as well as uh, Dylan Duff and Lucas Allgaier, and Dayton Hopkins is from the area. Will Kim does from the area. And it's just not a surprise to see Dylan Duff want to come that weekend too, because he wants to sell K-State to those other players as well. And uh, him, Al Geyer, and Kimna, and Almanza all have a pretty strong relationship already. So that, that'll be a big weekend for K-State. And like I posted yesterday, like it, it's no surprise that that's the weekend that they want Dylan Duff to come as well. Yeah, that's, uh, you, you tie it all together with that guy right there. A fun fact, I have been to Trophy Club, Texas before, and uh, it been just down the street from Byron Nelson High School. So there you go. Uh, I've, I, I actually, when I saw that, I was like, ah, that's, a, that's a good one to have in the back <laughs> of my hat that I know about. Uh, real quick, so we talked about, like, this is the, the Missouri ties all over the place, so don't get fooled by the Texas tag. Almanza has the St. Louis ties. Dayton Hopkins, we haven't talked about a ton recently, though. Uh, but another four star that is on the visit list as of now for June 7th through the 9th. And you see Mizzou, K State, and then Iowa State a distant third. Uh, do you have any update or inklings on what the Dayton Hopkins situation is? Uh, those three are probably what I would say his top three are. All three are going to get official visits. And then you just kind of go from there because. Uh, it's it's another highly ranked four star player that K State's right in the thick of. So you, it's one where you just have to wait and see. Uh, he'll be at Missouri, I believe it's uh, June 21st. And then I think that Iowa State will get the official visit the 14th. So it'll be a tight race between the three because I, I think that he is kind of conflicted right now mm-hmm. as to where he wants to go. 
Okay, well, that's uh, that's at least good insight on where that's going. Then June 14th through the 16th, right now we we know River Pepper is a running back uh, from the same high school that Skylar Thompson went to is in the mix. This is this seems to be kind of a newer one on the radar. So what's uh what's the situation with River Peppers? Uh, so great Casey's name by really, the way. Yeah, I was gonna say elite name. Uh, River Peppers uh is a newer target, but K State's been recruiting him for a while now. And you said same high school Skylar Thompson. I can raise you one here. He is actually friends with uh, Skylar Thompson's little brother Anthony. Okay, so, and it's close with the Thompson family. So I think that K-State is in a good spot with all of the ties that he has there. What I'm really interested in, and we've kind of talked about this before, is I think that it'll be two running backs in this class. At least that's kind of how they're acting right now with how they're scheduling visits and everything. Uh, but it, it could be him, Montario Austin, and DJ Duggar all kind of going for two of the two spots. So it could be a first to commit of the th- or the first two to commit of the three. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Also, River Peppers might not be a running back. They've they've floated out that he could play in the slot as well. OK, well, that I, I think that's that's interesting news to hear for everybody. So, all right, we'll finish this out. Then uh, the big one, we can't go a recruiting update without him being mentioned. But Lincoln Cure set to come the 21st through the 23rd, the four star tied in from Goodland. Uh, probably not much new here, but but let the people know what uh, is out there on Lincoln Cure right now. Uh, there there isn't a ton new out there. I just I still think it's K State and Oregon. I've said this for a little bit now. Uh, I will say that I had a recruiting update on the site where you can go and re- he really got in depth about like everything that they did because it, it was more of a student oriented visit, I would say, than a football visit. Uh, I will say something that I didn't put in the recruiting update because I didn't know about it yet. But uh, Lincoln Cure did say that the K-State visit that he took during the spring, uh, I believe it was like April 11th, was the best visit that he's gone on this spring. So K-State has that. And I just just think that they've had the lead for such a long time that eventually it's going to happen. Yeah, this this feels like one at this point, the way it's gone, probably probably take the official visit and get a commitment soon after that. It it seems to be the pacing of this one now, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think that this is a guy, there's the way this feels like this played out for Lincoln cure. We'll get out of here in just a second, but the way that this feels like this has played out is for a long time. K state's been the number one and he's just doing a thorough job of making sure that's still the case. Like I think it's going to take, a really big wow from somebody else to to come in and win this thing. But he at least wants to make sure that he's not just, you know, Hey, I'm a Kansas guy. I, I like Kansas state. I, lo- I love what it could provide for me. Let's do it now. I think, I think he's handling this in a, in a way that he's making sure that it's the right decision. And every step of the way, the indication that it's looked like to us and probably to, to fans on the site has been that, yeah, K state is the right choice. Yeah, it feels like the Avery Johnson recruitment a little bit to me, where not quite to the extreme of K State had the lead the whole time with Avery, but K State probably took the lead for Avery in December, January, and he still played it out up until uh, his commitment uh, announced in July. July. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that K State is in a really, really good spot and has been for a long time. All right, well, that will do it for this week's K-State football recruiting update. Thanks to Drew. If you want more on what the Cats are doing on the recruiting trail, head over to kstateonline.com, get a little more in-depth, and get constant updates on whenever a guy schedules one of his official visits and any other nugget that comes up along the way. So for Drew, I'm Mason. We are out of here. Thanks for watching K-State Online.